Abortion happens every day. Millions of people around the world will have an abortion each year. But the majority of those people will never talk about their abortion experiences. What if millions of people broke their silence and told the truth about their lives and their choices? This is Melissa Madera in New York City, and you are listening to the Abortion Diary Podcast. I'm Samantha, and this is my abortion story. Um, I was living in Arizona and going to university, Arizona State, and I had recently fallen crazy in love with this guy. Um... And it was my senior year of school, and he lived here in New York, and I was there. And we had this, like, long-distance love affair thing going on. And (laughs) And so whenever he would come to see me, or I would go to see him, you know, there was, like, lots of excitement to see each other. And, um, And I ended up getting pregnant right after he asked me to marry him. And I quickly figured out that if I had the baby, I would have the baby one month before I would finish a project that I had been working on for the university for four years. And that I would have the baby one month before I graduated from school. I wouldn't be able to graduate. And... um, and it just wasn't going to work for me. And the guy that got me pregnant, who I did end up marrying and having two more kids with, um, he, I don't know, we just talked about it and realized it was just like, it was just, it was like we could come back to New York and do it the way we wanted to do it, where, you know, we lived together and got married and like, did some adventuring around and have the life that we wanted to have or we could stay in Arizona and I could not finish school and I could not finish my project and he could like become a plumber or something. (laughs) You know what I mean? And we could probably end up like never getting married and probably not liking each other very much. So we decided that the best thing to do was to have an abortion terminate the pregnancy and it was like it was weird thing I mean it was weird for me to wrap my mind around it because I always kind of saw abortion as something that you did when you like got really drunk at a bar and fell on top of a guy naked or you know what I mean or you know like if like it was like around a one night stand or like if you're with some guy that was a total asshole or you know just like it, it but not with like the guy that you were like engaged to, to be married to um so that was a little weird um for me to wrap yeah. my mind around but yeah <sighs> I don't know. It also just didn't make sense for me to, like, stop my whole universe for what, I don't know. I couldn't have given my kids what I needed to give them back then. Um, So, I decided to have an abortion, and, you know, and, like, being a woman, I also needed to talk about it with every single friend that was close to me (laughs) before I did it. And uh, most people were very supportive, and one of my very best friends was very unsupportive, which was really weird and hard, because I didn't even know that about her, Um, that she was not pro-choice. I don't know if she's not not pro-choice either. She just, I don't know. She was like, you're going to marry this guy. I was like, yeah, well, I hope so. I think I will if I don't end up having this kid. But anyway, um, so I decided to have an abortion, and it was really weird. I didn't know how to tell my work what was going on with me. Um, 
I didn't know how they would respond. I didn't know if I sh- if it was any of their business. Uh, yeah. But I also needed to like take a few days off of work. I had no yeah. idea. I really didn't know anything about the process back then because mm-hmm. I was very young. Um, I didn't know if you know. I mean, I didn't know if I would it's gonna be sick for a week from it, or if you could like do it and go to work the next day or two hours later, or what. Um, so I lied and said I was sick. <laughs> um, and one of the people at my work that I was working closely with on my project found out I was pregnant. I can't remember how. Um, and he was like really excited that I was pregnant and because he also knew that I was getting married. But... And that was weird, too, kind of navigating, telling this, like, old guy, like, hey, I'm not keeping this baby. Um, And then he was very sad for me, and that kind of, like, added added to the tremulous water of the lie that I was going to weave, that I had intended to weave to tell my work, and... um, I don't know. It was weird. That part was really hard and weird. I'm, I'm a terrible liar, and I wasn't really sure. And I feel like lies are always really half-truths anyway. <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't know what to say. But at any rate, and I don't even remember what I said. Um, so I went to Planned Parenthood and um, confirmed my pregnancy and made my appointment to have my abortion and decided that I wanted to do it when my fiance, boyfriend, fiance, I guess he was then, um, wasn't gonna be around. I wanted to do it while he was at work. I felt like I needed to like be by myself. Um, so, and he had kind of agreed to that, not really knowing either that what you know like how I would I don't know I think he was just trying to give me space you know if I wanted it and so he went to work and I was gonna take myself and then chickened out at the last minute and so my mom took me and we went and I did um, just a medical abortion where they give you the pill and they did not tell me anything else and I went home and I took this pill and started contracting and didn't know what that was and totally freaked out and cried and felt sick and sat on the toilet and threw up and it was horrible. It was absolutely, I mean, I was literally like, it's one of the things that I look back on as like one of the scariest things ever. And now that I've had two kids, I know exactly what that was, but no one talked to me about it. And I mean, I really feel like abortion doulas are very important um, for that reason, because I just think about, you know, I was in my 20s when this happened, and I know that there's girls much younger than I was doing this, and how much that would scare them and shape them as women really bothers me and has always bothered me. Um, but yeah, so my mom, I had my mom call Planned Parenthood, and the nurse told me that, um, you know, that it was fine and normal and what it was, and, um, I was able to calm down a bit, but I still didn't know how to deal with it. Like, I literally just, I didn't know, you know? It's like, you're contracting, you know? You're, like, delivering this thing. I don't know. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was. I was bleeding and pooping. It's terrible. I remember when I was, they handed me, like, they, I, I can't remember if it was a whole pill or a half a pill, and then I had to take the other half at home or a second pill at home. But basically, my instructions were to like take this half at the at Planned Parenthood, and then they gave me this pad that was like the size of a diaper, which was so embarrassing for a twenty-something-year-old girl um, to put in my pants. And then they're like, "You might feel a little bit nauseous," and that was all they said. And to take this other pill a few hours later. And so I took it and I got in the car and immediately started throwing up. And I didn't have, oh, that was it. They told me that I was going to need to have more pads. So not only 
was I like sick as hell immediately, but we had to drive to a drugstore while I'm in the middle of an abortion, buy more pads because they said I was going to need them right away and then go home um, after that. So we had to go to a drugstore and we were like 10 miles away from my house probably. So we like drove for a few miles and throwing up all in the car. It was awful. And then we go to a drugstore and then my mom ran in for me, thankfully. Thankfully I did not go by myself, which I could have done. And then I would have really been screwed. I don't even know how I would have gotten home. Um, and yeah. And I got these pads and got home and then had to like choke down this other half or whole pill I can't remember which and it was just terrible and if I could have had somebody there to say this is okay this is what's supposed to be happening I know you feel like shit I know you do and you're strong and I've been there and you've been there and you're going there and this is all part of it and you're gonna feel better soon I was like I was in no man's land, <laughs> you know, and that's, yeah, I want, I want there to be a doula for every girl having her first abortion, at least, if not her second, third, or fourth, but, um, you know, just so you know that you're not dying, and then you don't have to, like, wonder about it for years. It's weird to think of it this way, but I caught it early, so I was able to do it medically, and I'm happy that I got to do it that way, because um, I feel like the vacuum would be would have been a much worse experience and a lot scarier, and I wish that they had had more people available to talk to me about it. And I know, I mean, I know, especially in Arizona, where, you know, I can't believe that in an, in the 90s the state was throwing very much money at Planned Parenthood and I'm sure it's even less now that they had people available to help with that um, but I really wish that I had been better informed as to what was happening I had no tools in my tool bag to support me and my mom sure as hell didn't know what to do um, so by the time it was I was done you know passing that little zygote and contracting and feeling really horrible, then I got to feel really emotionally thrashed by it. Um, because I was, it was just, I was just so unprepared. I mean, really unprepared. And um, when my husband came home, or boyfriend, fiance, <laughs> um, that guy, came home, you know, I wish now that he would have been there for it because he didn't, I mean, he like got to go to work and then came home and was like, why are you laying there like a lump? And I couldn't even begin to explain to him how awful I felt and what had happened to me that day. And, you know, I mean, he was sympathetic, but he couldn't really understand. So that sucked. I felt like, I don't know. I felt like for years after that, and it's been a long time now, um, since I did that, maybe 11 years or so. But before I started having kids, um, I, I felt really sad periodically about the abortion not that I had had it I was glad that I did but just like sad about how it went down over the years after I had my abortion I just the thing that made me I, I was very thankful for the decision that I made and I knew always that it was the right decision that I, to make and um but I just wish that I would have been better equipped and had more support um, pr before and during and um, and kind of like immediately after. Can you call that postpartum? Is that postpartum? Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. And, and immediately postpartum because I needed to be taken care of. It's a lot of hormones too that 
you know, that <sighs> happened in that moment. <laughs> a lot of, like, I don't know. You know, it's, like, all that progesterone, and then it's just gone, and it just felt like shit. And I thought about it for years. For years and years. Um, and I still do. But, you know, it doesn't feel sharp anymore. Um. I want to share it because... This is my way of saying that abortion doesn't need to be a dirty secret. It's not a dirty secret. It's part of being a woman. It's part of being a human. It's part of living life, you know, Earth 2013 or 14 or 17 or 25. And I feel lucky that I live in a time where I can still get one, and I hope that my daughter, if she ever needs to, can still get one. Um, and I hope that she, this would help to kind of um, better shape the support around having one. Mm -hmm. And that's why. I don't think that's something that a lot of people think about. They're like, I've got to terminate this pregnancy. They're not thinking, like, who can help me do this so I don't, so it's, like, the best experience. You know, so that you're making lemonade instead of just handed a bowl of lemons. I do occasionally bring it up with my husband. Not, I mean, I used to, like, bring it up kind of in a sad way, like, before we had... Um, our first kid, my daughter, before we had her, you know, I would kind of feel like, man, if we had a baby, like if we would have had that baby, that baby would be five. But then, you know, we wouldn't have done all the travel and I wouldn't have this amazing job and I never would have finished my projects and you wouldn't have your career. And, you know, so it's like, I would feel sad, but thankful. And, and now I feel thankful. I think that because I hadn't given birth um, already, it was probably easier. I think that if I had to have an abortion today, which I would still consider, um, it would be a much more difficult decision. I feel like a woman that has an abortion after, you know, having a live birth is a very brave strong person and that decision is like a thousand fold more intense probably mm. depending on the circumstances I mean if it was like my circumstances now it'd be a much more difficult choice to make um, but you know I don't know no regrets you know I, I don't feel like you can live your life with regrets and I don't feel regretful that I did it at all I certainly wouldn't be sitting here. I don't know what my life would be like if I hadn't. It might be better. It might not be. I don't know. You know? It just mm -hmm. is what it is. Be here now. With a go. sleeping baby. With a sleeping baby <laughs> and a boogery nose. <laughs> For more information about the Abortion Diary podcast, visit us on the web at theabortiondiary.com or email us at info at theabortiondiary.com.